The global geopolitical landscape has intensified. A full-scale war between Russia and Ukraine has been going on for more than two years now. Israel and Hamas are in a full-scale war at the moment, while piracy in the Red Sea has reached new heights, with hostile forces targeting merchant ships and obstructing the Suez Canal. China's assertiveness towards Taiwan adds another layer of concern. In this volatile environment, the importance of being well-equipped cannot be overstated, as every piece of weaponry becomes crucial. The United States has initiated a significant modernization effort for the A-10 Thunderbolt attack aircraft. Skepticism may arise, questioning the decision to continue deploying an aircraft that first took flight half a century ago. However, in this video, we will delve into the rationale behind this move, shedding light on the global global challenges facing aviation. The A-10 Thunderbolt II, affectionately known as the Warthog by the Army, is a twin-engine, single-seat, close-air support ground attack aircraft specifically designed for destroying enemy armored vehicles, manpower, and fortified positions. Produced from 1975 to 1984, it has seen action in conflicts such as Iraq and Afghanistan, showcasing remarkable efficiency and survivability. During Operation Desert Storm in 1991, for instance, one 44A-10 attack aircraft successfully neutralized 900 tanks, 1,200 artillery systems, and 2,000 units of other equipment, with a remarkably low loss rate of only seven machines, or one airplane per 1,350 sorties. Stay tuned to discover why the A-10 Thunderbolt remains a crucial asset in the evolving landscape of military aviation. The A-10 Thunderbolt, or Warthog, has earned a reputation for its remarkable resilience, with recorded instances of pilots successfully landing the aircraft despite catastrophic failures such as a completely failed hydraulic control system one operational engine and significant damage to the wing and keel. Armed with a formidable 7-barrel 30mm GAU 8A cannon, boasting a rapid fire rate of 3,900 rounds per minute, the A-10 can carry various air-to-air -air and air-to-ground missiles, unguided missile blocks, and both freefall and guided bombs on its 11 suspension points. Its robust design includes titanium armor ranging from 13 to 38mm in thickness surpassing comparable Russian aircraft like the Su-25, which features armor ranging from 10 to 24 mm. Despite its impressive track record, concerns about the A-10, obsolescence have emerged, particularly in the face of modern air defense systems. While the aircraft has proven highly effective in conflicts with weaker opposition, such as those in Iraq and Afghanistan, doubts persist about its viability against a more formidable adversary. The U.S. Air Force has sought to retire the A-10 Warthog since the conclusion of the 1991 Gulf War, contending that it may struggle to survive against a well-equipped and capable air defense system in more challenging combat scenarios. The A-10's prolonged operational life can be attributed to a robust lobby in Congress, unwavering support from Army veterans and the general public's fondness for the aircraft. This strong backing has allowed the A-10 to continue operating well beyond its originally envisioned lifespan. Testimonials from military personnel, such as a former Marine, expressing gratitude for the A-10's distinctive sound as a symbol of rescue, highlight the emotional connection and appreciation for its role in critical situations. The F-35, initially hailed with high expectations by American generals, was designed as a versatile aircraft intended to replace both the F-16 and the A-10, serving as a universal solution. The Pentagon advocated for this consolidation, emphasizing simplified maintenance reduced costs, and the replacement of the aging A-10 with a technologically advanced counterpart. The challenge in replacing the A-10 lies not only in fulfilling its missions, but doing so with equal or greater effectiveness. The successor must possess the capability to precision target adversaries on the ground, as battlefield demarcations can be as narrow as a few hundred feet. In 2018, a competition was conducted to assess the suitability of the F-35 for the role of the A-10, focusing on low to medium threat air defense environments with light anti-aircraft guns and, at worst, man-portable air defense systems, man pads. Notably, the evaluation excluded high threat scenarios involving enemy fighters and modern air defenses, as the A-10 was not designed for such conditions. The test results, though partially declassified five years later, revealed a critical assessment of the 
F-35's performance in comparison to the A-10. The competition aimed at evaluating the aircraft's capability for direct air support, specifically in attacking enemy ground forces to support friendly ground troops. The 48-page report, which took five years to be partially declassified, uncovered that the F-35 was less effective than the A-10 in carrying out the assigned tasks for close air support. The F-35 faced challenges when tasked with swiftly engaging and neutralizing adversaries, especially in situations where the enemy could potentially retaliate with weapons like manpads. While the F-35 possesses capabilities to defend against various threats and missile attacks, it demonstrated vulnerabilities against ground-based threats like the Soviet ZSU-23-4, causing significant damage. In the face of more formidable air defense systems like the Soviet SA-11, the F-35 was deemed highly vulnerable, lacking the capability to effectively engage and neutralize such threats. Moreover, the F-35 lacks a specialized cannon like the A-10's GAU-8A, capable of rapidly transforming armored targets into heavily perforated ones, making it less adept at certain ground support missions. Recognizing the economic considerations, the US Senate and Congress highlighted the significant cost disparity between the F-35 and A-10 operations, with the former costing approximately $44,000 per flight hour, compared to the A-10's more economical range of $11,000 to $20,000 per flight hour. In light of these cost factors, coupled with the acknowledged capabilities of the A-10 in certain roles, a decision was made to preserve and modernize the legendary aircraft rather than entirely replace it with the FEF-35. With 281 A-10 aircraft still in service and an average age of 41 years, a comprehensive modernization effort has been undertaken, including the replacement of wings. Boeing has been awarded a contract to produce new wings for the entire fleet, ensuring that these aircraft can continue operations until the mid-2030s. The new wings, designed for an additional 10,000 flight hours, are being installed by A-10 maintenance specialists at Ogden Air Logistics Complex in Utah and Osun Air Base in South Korea. Beyond wing replacement, a notable enhancement involves the introduction of new GBU-39 bombs into the A-10's arsenal. The aircraft is now capable of carrying up to 18 of these munitions, enabling it to theoretically engage up to 18 different targets in a single combat sortie. The GBU-39 is a precision-guided aerial bomb weighing 130 kilograms, known for its compact size, allowing aircraft to carry a larger quantity. Despite its relatively low explosive mass of 93 kilograms, the GBU-39 high accuracy makes it effective in hitting different targets. Its low observability adds a strategic advantage by making it challenging for anti-aircraft missiles to defend against a massive strike by these bombs. Previously integrated into several U.S. Air Force combat aircraft, such as the F-15 Strike Eagle fighter bombers, the A-10 is now being equipped with GBU-39S as part of its modernization efforts. Additionally, enhancements to the A-10 include improvements to the Scorpion's helmet mounted sight, facilitating faster and more effective ground target identification. Upgrades may also address communication systems, potentially incorporating a new Link 16 system for information sharing with other units, thereby enhancing situational awareness and survivability. The proposed cockpit modifications, featuring one large display instead of multiple screens, aim to simplify the control of the complex aircraft system. However, it's important to note that these upgrades may not necessarily enhance the aircraft ability to operate in areas with modern layered air defenses. The challenges faced by Russian aviation in the conflict with Ukraine, particularly the effectiveness of Ukrainian air defense systems, have been underscored by incidents like the destruction of multiple Russian Su-34 bomber fighters. The deployment of advanced air defense systems, such as the American Patriots, has allowed Ukrainian forces to engage Russian aircraft from a distance, making it risky for Russian aviation to enter the Ukrainian air defense Zone. However, the absence of dedicated attack aviation and air cover for troops on the battlefield is evident on both sides of the conflict. Russian Su-25 attack aircraft, traditionally tasked with supporting ground forces, seem to be less active, possibly due to the challenges posed by modern air defense systems. As you speculate, the introduction of A-10 Warthog, 
wings, known for their effectiveness in close air support, could potentially change the dynamics of the conflict. If A-10S were to join the F-16S in the skies over Ukraine, it could provide more robust support for ground troops, especially in situations where precision strikes and close air support are crucial. Similarly, if A-10S were deployed over Gaza, their unique capabilities could significantly impact the battle, offering precise and effective ground support. While helicopters and drones have their roles, the A-10's combination of firepower, durability, and ground attack capabilities makes it a formidable asset in scenarios where close air support is vital. In the second case, it would certainly play a very positive role. Palestinian militants have no serious air defense. The Warthog could destroy them without causing serious destruction, as it happens now when Israeli aviation in the form of F-16S demolishes entire neighborhoods, which leads to huge casualties among civilians. We think that there are no A-10S over Gaza for one single reason, the unwillingness of the US to interfere in this Arab-Israeli war, and Israel has neither such airplanes nor pilots who can fly them. As for the participation of the A-10 in the Russian-Ukrainian war, the question is debatable. The Russians have a very powerful air defense system, consisting of S-300, S-400, Buk, and Panzer air defense systems. Therefore, it's deadly dangerous for a warthog to approach the front line. But to use GBU-39 guided bombs from a distance of 60 to 100 kilometers is quite possible. To sneak up to the attack line so as to not be detected by Russian locators, soar sharply to 5 to 8 kilometers drop the bombs, and then return to the airfield again. In the second scenario, the introduction of A-10 warthogs would likely play a highly positive role. Palestinian militants lack significant air defense capabilities, allowing the warthog to precisely target them without causing extensive collateral damage, as often seen when Israeli F-16S conduct airstrikes leading to substantial civilian casualties. The absence of A-10S over Gaza can be attributed to the US's reluctance to intervene in the Arab Israeli Israeli conflict, and Israel lacks both such aircraft and pilots trained to operate them. Regarding the potential participation of the A-10 in the Russian-Ukrainian conflict, the matter is open to debate. Russia boasts a formidable air defense system comprising S-300, S-400, Buk, and Panzer systems, making it extremely perilous for a warthog to approach the front line directly. However, utilizing GBU-39 guided bombs from a safe distance of 60 to 100 kilometers is a viable strategy. By strategically approaching the attack line to avoid detection by Russian radars, ascending rapidly to altitudes of 5 to 8 kilometers, releasing the bombs, and then safely returning to the airfield, the A-10 could carry out effective strikes while minimizing the risk posed by Russia's sophisticated air defense systems. In any case, we're sure that the fail-safe warthog still has to serve America, and it's too early to scrap the veteran. As one U.S. Army veteran put it, the A-10 warthog will never retire. He's too good at what he was made for. Every man on Earth wants that angel sitting on his shoulder. Long live the warthog. What do you think about the modernization of the A-10 Thunderbolt and its involvement in ongoing military conflicts? Write about it in your comments below. Don't forget to subscribe to our channel and click on the bell to not miss new videos about modern weaponry. We hope you have a great day and we'll see you again soon.